Okay, so I thought I'd dive into a chapter that is actually really hard to read um, for many reasons and uh, I think also it's it's difficult to read because um, a lot of things have changed and there's actually so much more that I can say and um, in fact like an insane amazing story that includes my testimony <laughs> Um, and so this chapter is like pretty hectic, but um, I don't expect you to know what you don't know, so I will hopefully soon make a video, sort of, or I aim to at least make a video of um, me telling my testimony. Um, anyway, so I'm just going to start reading, and uh, yeah. Acceptance and realization can aid in, aid in one's survival. The gift of life and the gift of death for me are equal. Being merely alive is the same as merely being dead. So I think that if one's life is reaching its end, there is no shame in embracing death. Death is a part of the natural process of evolving spiritual beings. I've had many fantasies about dying, or rather the places I would go and the way I would feel after my death. There are idealistic locations I believe my spirit will experience and journey to once I am dead. These fantasies became so auto-tuned to my mind that I was convinced that no one would ever be able to stop me from believing in them, even though inside I knew they were twisted obsessions. I will admit to you, I still yearn for those ideas, I yearn for death and where I think I'll go. Appropriate to this is something that has been said very often. There is nothing more stubborn than a made-up mind. And that could not be more true both then and now, hence the reason as to why I have not been able to let them go. Even if I tell myself I should not think of them in that way, that I view death incorrectly, or there was something wrong with me, I cannot alter my deepest thoughts. I just keep thinking of how. How could I change my mind when I have already cemented my spiritual beliefs? Okay, so... <laughs> I am... I'm purposefully deciding not to comment. Okay. Um... Okay, um, somehow through all the questions and undetermined answers, I became convinced that it would not be possible to achieve any of my ideals here. So a lot of the time my goal was, and is, to die. I so intensely wanted to go to these odysseys I fantasized about in order to finally find peace and calm. Minimalism and simplicity and the universe of serenity and love was all I wanted. It is all I want. On the other hand, and yes, there is always another hand. I started thinking about why I was still here. I mean, why not be dead already? It would be easy to make that wish come true. It would almost as... It was almost as if I wanted death to be like a gift to me. I did not want to be the one to end it all. Instead, I wanted something similar to the whole pulling the plug situation. I suppose one could think of it as an angel of death job. Um, I often felt as if I had some kind of noxious sickness depleting me and that my life commenced in reaching its end. I consistently desired to be whisked away by the cool sea breeze or be absorbed into the warm summer sky. But I simply could not grant it to myself. No matter how much I want to end this pain and anguish, I do not know if I could be selfish enough to do it. It is like I would do it on the behalf of others, almost as if I would go against their best wishes and cast an, un an intentional net of pain. I do not intend to make anyone's life more sad nor difficult, and I do not want to decide for others either. But what makes me want to change my mind about it is that I feel I am more of a burned in when I am alive, when suddenly, which suddenly makes 
getting rid of myself, a strong contender in my preferred cause of death. This turns deciding for others into a description of feelings and stripped hesitation. Alas, I think I should add that even if I were to tell you I wouldn't do it, it does not mean I could never do it. Never say never, they say, as the mind alters its action much slower than it alters itself. Hence, one will never quite know what one will do with unmonitored action. These views I have about life and death confuse me, as I am not sure if they are true or not. They persistently contradict one another. I feel like I've lost touch with my inner self. I cannot seem to be able to dig deep enough to know if my end is truly what I want. I think that this is... I think it is, but then I doubt myself because my feelings do not always concur. Okay, I think it's actually quite interesting. With all this in mind, I don't know, I put the book like sort of behind. Never mind, I can't see. <laughs> With all of this in mind, I tend to think about the f fact that I've. Li lived through so much that should have killed me that perhaps my purpose is to live instead of dying. At this point in my life though I am merely staying alive which isn't very formidable as it is forced instead of embraced. To live is very different from merely being alive. To live is to dance to the music of life. To be alive is to listen to the songs and attempt to refrain from pulling out the damn earplugs. Because the music really means nothing to you anymore. I know quite a bit about surviving. It resembles a state where being alive consists plainly of one's physical body functioning at a medically acceptable level. And this one's spirit, and with this, without one's spirit being connected. This often feels as if... A, as if one's genuine and original self has completely disappeared. Without trying to sound condescending, you may even feel as if you're a waste of space or loss or an unwanted box of nothingness without useful purpose, and it sucks. And what makes it more difficult is in the state of mind is that keeping alive is tiring and demotivating, especially when one has long forgotten how to live. Where is Wally in this puzzle? Well, if it is fairly simple. Some have the gift of being able to live, to really live, and some do not. But for those who do not, they have not necessarily lost everything. Which is what I need to keep remembering. I believe that it is possible to share others' zest. The only way I can describe this in a more adequate manner is that one without the gift, that is the gift of being able to dance to the music of life, can still appreciate one who does. For example, there are certain people that resemble a type of light. Like the sun or the stars, they emit an incredible warming aura to a large proximity around them. There is no way that one cannot notice these people, these people that are like the rays of life. I often notice these people, and when I do, yes, I'm sad and that I'm not like them, but I'm also humbled by the precious gift they have. Since I view it as a gift, I'm glad that they have been blessed with it. At least somebody has it. These topics of... Oh, sorry. These types of people tend to truly deserve the quality. When something like that is best suited to someone, it is really touching to see. I am merely alive. I've accepted that. I'm aware that at times I will only have the strength to placidly carry on like a robot every day. I know that I'm, I have to monitor myself and tell myself what to do, both whilst trying to be mindful. At least I'm trying, and that has got to count for something. I possess a weighted portion of emptiness that I cannot avoid carrying. Even though I feel so inhumane, as if I'm a parasite watching over a body so scarred and damaged, I must refrain from becoming caught in the disappointment my inner spirit feels it cannot escape. I do not want to seem cynical while saying all of this. They are earnest realizations that I've made, and I'm openly sharing with you. 
through realizing that I think I've achieved some kind of contentment. Yes, perhaps the feeling of being done and uh, and content may fuel my readiness to embrace death, but I still attempt to remain open-minded to the possibility that my opinion about life and death may change. Amen for that one there. Eh? Um, you may be wondering why I feel I have reached my time. It is due to the fact that I feel as if my purpose in life has already been fulfilled. I am under the impression that I played a noteworthy role in my mother's life. It was the greatest blessing and privilege. To be integrated and included in something so gentle and beautiful was beyond satisfying, and because of that I feel that I have fulfilled all that I wanted to fulfill. As for the above, in many ways I feel I am prepared to let go. I scrupulously yearned for it. I already feel as if I lost a big chunk of myself. I am generally convinced that if I cut the cords, I will find my ultimate peace. Whether it lies after death or somewhere else, I just want to be there, that's all. Unfortunately for the people who expected something different from me, these fantasies of mine have not disappeared. Th these there is a major chance that they never will. I am self-obliged to be realistic about it all, hence I am telling it to you. You may say my thinking seems wrong or pessimistic. You may say that things will get better and other transparent typical sayings. But what you must realize is that you cannot change me. At the end of the day, everything begins and finishes in one's head. I must admit, though, it feels strange for my views of death to be so uncharacteristically solidified, especially when everything else in my head compromises of a cons consistent, ever-changing jungle of jumbled thoughts, and not to mention my emotions. They, are, they too are disorderly and hyperactively chaotic. Both are like meteorites making craters and ind indentations upon my moonish mind. On a slightly more positive note, even though I have come to realize and conclude these things that may seem slightly negative, importance lies in the fact that I have done so. I have created balance via communication, and in realizing this I have kept myself alive, which is not nothing. For some reason or no reason, I am still here, so I guess I'll carry on stepping. I'm surviving, that's something, and perhaps that something could drive out the nothing and eventually end up as a blessing worth waiting for, one which does not come with dying, but living. That was not a bad chapter, I must say. Like I felt like I got actually something from it that um, has still yet to reveal itself to me. And... Uh, when I read the title of the chapter, I thought I, I thought it was something else. So it was actually, um, yeah, just for me, it was, I, I can obviously, um, especially towards the end, I'm able to expand quite a lot from, from there and from some of the things that I had said. And uh, during sort of the entire chapter, um, which was very short and short for proper reasons and I don't know if it's obvious but I mean I will point it out that there's massive amounts of um, content let's say um, that is not included in any in anything that I said there in that chapter and then some of the things that I said they're basically like the front for a whole like storage space of emotion and thought and uh, things that I had gone through in life to to that I find it's that I find interesting to sort of like reflect back on but not necessarily um uh sort of something that I have to do um but I will say that uh, <laughs> I choose I choose life, and so I do both live it, and um, I'm grateful to be alive, and I'm grateful 
to embrace life and to be able to see life for what it is <laughs> and um yeah i've been through enough let's say from then to now <laughs> to be able to say that um as long as you don't give up and as long as you keep on keeping on you know and you don't have to stay at the level of just merely surviving but definitely you know try and move forward in life try and embrace life more it's a journey it's a process don't you know engage in self-destructive things if your thoughts are yucky and if you're and negative and there's repetition in that and you have uh, that similar type of thing happening with your emotions and perhaps you know you're engaging in behaviors that are um, uh, sort of questionable rightly so because if you're if you're having to ask questions why this why that perhaps you should try and f sort of look upon yourself look into your life and see oh, okay am i am i living my best life or am i even moving towards that or am i like kind of living like i'm asleep i mean lots of people kind of are walking around um or they they are but they're not they're doing and they're not being and so they're they are here and they are around and it's sad for me because a lot of people um need to wake up like wake up and wake up in the way that uh, you get a fright and then you sort of um take a breath and okay and you're pretty grateful for that breath to be honest like to be grateful for your breath that is a practice and when you understand yeah uh, that's a yeah i i recommend gratitude practice and it's something that you ultimately start doing um so the way to do it is to start <laughs> and um and uh, so when you start you can start i'll maybe do a different video of like ways you can do that or something like that but um i think i'll refer back to sort of the five minutes you know that you that you take quiet time you step outside look up look look up at the sky and that's very important and see what you can see okay and then you know you can sit down or you can just sort of return to normal and then you know listen to stuff around you but then take a couple of deep breaths in and out in and out um enough to get sort of a rhythm going and then you feel at some point um that you can almost like a sigh that you took intentional breaths in and out you looked up and eventually you let go and you feel like a sense of pause or stillness and um, in that you can look around um, you can look at your own clothes even if you want to start with clothes you can think of a friend or whatever even if it's just one thing you can identify that you can say well, i'm grateful for that i'm grateful for that and um yeah uh to try and develop a gratitude attitude that's my that there we go like that's my sort of task that i'll, I'll give you something to write down maybe something to to try out practice and maybe write it down in your notebook and pen that i that i hope that you got and um yeah hashtag uh, gratitude attitude what is a gratitude attitude and how does that help you to move in life in such a way that you're embracing life you're living it you're noticing life and the beauty in it and you at the same time you be, you're able to tr to keep on keeping on even though that part of life is hard but you're not letting it consume you nor make you give up 
and so yeah and if you got that gratitude attitude that's awesome and so what are the things that you are grateful for when you start and you begin and you'll find that there is so much and you'll find that there's different things and for me like when I felt this is doing a practice when I went to that space in which um, at the same time I felt the sense of pure gratitude at the same time as I was I was thinking of, of last breaths of um, people and I was also thinking along the lines of lifeguards when we pull someone out the water we you know and they're not breathing we have to check you know, is there any obstructions and then also we would have to um, sometimes perform CPR um, if they're not breathing or their heart is not beating then that's you know a lifeguard or a lifesaver that's sort of how the, how we, we're trained <laughs> um, because the point is to save a person's life or to get them to, back to life and I just found there was so much significance in the, that we would breathe our air into their lungs we would give them two breaths of life and then we'd start compressions and that to me was so amazing and then I thought obviously or maybe not obvious, sorry, um, but then I, you know, I thought, and this is something that I, I still sort of, um, I still find really amazing, interesting, and uh, there's more for me to sort of find in terms of gaining knowledge, but um, basically uh, about God and how he breathed us, he breathed us into life, he breathed us into life it's like yeah I've got <laughs> I've got goosebumps Jig. um that was oh uh, yeah anyway but just think you know one breath That is something to be grateful for because that is very different from not breathing at all and being long gone and um, then it's what's left is your spirit and um, and that's not this conversation but there's so there's even the breath in your most loved one you can be very grateful for that and of course we can be grateful for God's breath, God's life, God's love and everything who he is and how he made us, how he created us to be, how he invests in us so many things and they, you know, and he made us able to do things. He, he made a way for us to get to know him and um, he definitely has performed miracles in my life. He has saved me, from, like not even from situations. He's saved me from the pits of hell two times over. He saved my life when I was at the bottom of depression and in ICU. He turned it, things around and you know you know I was also in a um, situation where I was like literally on my deathbed I was busy dying my organs were busy failing and um, yeah that was a really weird experience I um, it's difficult to describe the experience and I feel like the rest of what I want to say is perhaps for another video, but um, that's just because the, um, at the time on my, on my, um, the recorder part on my phone <laughs> is saying that I only have like, what's it, seven minutes to, to talk and then the video is going to cut me off. Um, 
So, yeah, I mean... Uh, yeah, I just... I came to a realisation. Um, and also I did... Um, I chose to... Um, because I didn't want to go to hell. When I was dying, I was like... I'm going to hell if I die, you know, I accept, I accepted my own death and um, I was fine with that. Then sort of I went into, like I had two very, um, I would say in sort of experiences that are um, of the enlightening quality, let's put it that, that way, um, that made me concerned for my soul. And, um, you know, I was taken away up out fr from my body and I was shown, um, uh, it's so hard to describe, but there was sort of, um, something that I was, um, communicated, something was communicated to me, um, in between that and then returning and sort of waking up into my pain body and that happened twice and then I really sort of then I really started to become I sort of to think of my soul my my spirit and um because that in my mind at the time that well that's where I was kind of going to be that's what I was going to be next you know and so um, and my mom had passed like a few years before th at that point and I thought you know I knew my mom was in heaven or at least in whatever realm that um, means wherever she was my thinking at the time is well I, I want to go to heaven I want to be where my mom is and I think that I'm going to hell so I need to do something about this <laughs> So I needed sort of my soul to be saved, um, and it was like, it was really, you know, um, kind of last minute, it was very last minute, but anyway, I managed to contact a good friend of mine, who dropped her stuff, and she drove over an hour and a half to come to, to me, and she had to get special permission to come in, and she sat there with me and um, she led me through the salvation prayer. So essentially what I did was, you know, I gave my life to Jesus. That's a, um, that's why people say they, they get saved. But it's actually, that in topic of itself is actually very, very interesting and um, it's beautiful. Anyway, um, and um, I remember sitting with her and we did the prayer and the, only th the thing that I felt basically is like within my deepest inner core. So like I would refer to like just beneath, just like around my chest, stomach area, but not, not referring to my body. So the core that's beyond that, but that's from a core of my being, um, something moved uh, within me, and I, I suddenly knew, and also a, a peace came upon me, and a, a, bit, a type of relief as well, peace, relief, but, yeah, and, um, yeah, it, it, something definitely changed, and, um, she she based she then went home and um yeah well god decided he he was going to save me um again cuz i was really i was really dying and i didn't realize that giving my life to jesus um, was me choosing life and that that was a decision that I can make. That is a decision that you can make. Anyone can make. And and I didn't die because, uh, you know, because why? God. 
But God decided, and it was a miracle, and it was a miracle not only for me, but for the doctors as well, because they didn't know what to do anymore, so they were trying to just make me comfortable, um, and, uh, my, you know, it was, it was, uh, it was like, yay, hooray, you know, it's like, um, that, that, uh, things turned around, and, um, now it's a couple of years later, <laughs> I am here, and um, it's like almost unbelievable, but it is believable and very, very true, because I am alive, and I keep staying alive, and to me it's like, you know, I just, I, I, I do just, I have a gratitude, um, and uh, I'm, I'm also grateful to God for, I don't know if he makes decisions, I don't know how, but um, maybe it's just a part of way, the way he is, like how loving he is, how, you know, and um, yeah, I, it was a decision for me. I never knew that, like, that that's how it was, that it was a decision. And this brings me to a topic that I want to discuss, this decision-making. But uh, that is going to go on my list of topics, of things that I still want to discuss. So, um, yeah. But um, I'm alive. And I'm in life. And I'm grateful that... I'm alive and I give God the glory and I just wanted to say that but also to whoever's watching or listening I don't know what mind state you might be in but I need you to listen to me it's you matter you matter in a way that you know you have something to uh, do in this life there's a reason why you're here and that is not for nothing your story isn't over yet and you are loved you are love and love surrounds you you just need to tap into that and when I say you matter that means don't give up keep on keeping on and don't choose death and uh you are worthy. Every step you take, walk worthy. Know you are that. You are created to be the most beautiful being. And that is essentially what you already are. So, take that. Do you want it? Don't say, no, darling, yeah, that's wrong. <laughs> I'm not wrong when I'm telling you. I'm so glad I'm grateful that you're breathing. Amen. Cheers.